We are talking all things summer makeup, summer makeup products, summer makeup hacks, summer makeup applications. The reason I wanted to make this video is because as a makeup artist, when I'm doing clients makeup in the summer, I'm doing it completely different than I'm doing it in the fall and winter because it's a completely different climate. Obviously, a lot of times I'm doing brides who their weddings are outdoors and it's a completely different situation. You're in harsher lighting, you are in hotter weather, it could be humid, so I put together a bunch of products and thought of a bunch of techniques that I do on them on, and on myself on a regular basis to show you guys just how to get the most flawless, perfect, glowy summer makeup that actually lasts in the heat, in the sun, looks beautiful outside. But before we get into today's video, make sure to subscribe to my channel. If you are already subscribed, hit the little notification bell right next to the subscription button and you'll be notified every single time I post. But on that note, um, let's get into it. All right guys, so as always, I like to start with my brows. I start with my brows and my eyeshadow. That way, if there's any fallout, I can just clean anything up. So what I like to do during the summer is actually switch some of my powders out that I know look better in direct lighting and are really finely milled powders that still get the job done, even if you have combination or oily skin, but just look super fine and don't add any texture to the skin because being in direct sunlight is much harsher. And one of my all-time favorites is the Beauty Bakery Flower Better Not bitter powders. So I have two shades. This one is in the white and this one is in translucent. The color of the translucent is actually called oat, but the reason I'm bringing these up now is because before I fill my brows, even on clients, what I like to do in the summer is take a little bit of translucent powder on a brush. This is the Makeup by Ariel number 14 brush. And I like to run this through the brows because this is going to take away any shine or oil, not only when you're applying your brow products, but also keep it throughout the day. Especially we can get more shiny and oily in the summer, and you can notice sometimes when you're filling your brows, it just won't adhere to the skin because of the shine. So running a little powder through the brows like this before you fill them, will not only make your pencil glide on better, but it will prevent the brows from wearing off throughout the day. Okay, the brows are filled, and I use the Joa Brow Down To Me pencil. I love this pencil, it's like super micro fine. And now I'm gonna take a little bit of the Anastasia Magic Touch Concealer, and we are going to prime the lids and carve out the brows. Okay, brows are carved out. Now I'm gonna take what is left on that brush. I'm not dipping into any more translucent powder. This is what we set the eyebrows with. And I'm just pressing this on top of this concealer to set everything, to really control the oil, keep everything from creasing. But this will also make your shadows blend out better when you have a nice layer of translucent powder on top. I've been loving this Anastasia concealer to prep my eyelids with. Even if I don't want this much full coverage on my face, there's just something about prepping the eyelids with this that is just so silky and full coverage. It just looks gorgeous on my eyelids. I love it. All right, so for eyeshadow today, we are using the brand new NARS Summer Unrated Palette. I love this palette so much. I loved NARS's last summer palette from last year was so gorgeous and this one is even bigger and I just love the colors in it. So a makeup hack I like to do on clients and myself during the summer is not being afraid to bring shimmer shadows a little bit higher than you normally would in winter, fall, because when the light hits like the brow bone and just hits the makeup, having that dewy kind of reflectiveness even up onto the brow bone here just adds that summery, beautiful kind of incandescent glow to the skin. And normally, obviously, you know with makeup, everyone always says like, keep your mattes in your crease and shimmers really shouldn't go higher than the eyelid. But in summer, I like to do the opposite. So first we are going into the transition shade right up here, which is called Isla, I believe. And we're just dipping in on a nice pinched brush and we're going to very gently, nothing crazy, just smoke this out in the crease. Now I'm just switching to a fluffy blending brush with nothing on it to soften the edges. Now we're gonna dip into this gorgeous shade here. It's like an orangey, very slight shimmer. It really doesn't have an overly kind of glittery look to it. It kind of just has a nice sheen, almost like a very natural highlight. 
And this is the kind of shade I was talking about, about not being afraid to bring this up higher than normal, because it's not a glitter. I mean, by all means, if you want to put a glitter all the way up to your eyebrow, work. But this is the kind of shade I'm talking about, because when the light hits the brow bone, it just looks so gorgeous. So I'm literally putting this everywhere I put that transition shade. And normally this is not something I would bring up this high on my eye. It's summer, we wanna look glowy, so trust me. So as you can see, I'm really not afraid to almost wing this out and really bring this up. And now I'm gonna dip into that exact same shade on my finger and press this over the outside two thirds of the lid. The only area I'm keeping bare is that real, real inner corner. Oh, I mean, how pretty is that? To have a nice, almost orangey peach like this with that subtle, subtle, just incandescent glow to it. And I'm taking the brush we blended it out with and I'm just literally one time running this whoop, in the crease just to soften those edges and make sure everything is blended. And now with my finger again, I'm dipping into the gold shade here, which is called Satisfy. And we're going to pop this right on the very, very inner corner. Not at all as much as we would cover the territory with like a cut crease. I almost want this to look like a little blown out inner corner that fades onto the lid. And I'm gonna take the fluffy brush with nothing on it and just soften those edges. Now to really make that inner corner pop, I just found these at Ulta and I'm like mind blown because they are an exact dupe for the NARS version of this. This is the Ulta Beauty Lustrous foil eyeshadow and it literally comes in a little pot just like the NARS ones and it almost is a very just pressed super super glittery reflective shadow. I have a couple of these in the NARS ones but these are so much cheaper so you can dip this into your brush. It really is very flaky. This is how it's supposed to look and get a little bit on your brush. And you don't need glitter glue with these because it's almost like a foil. I'm not tapping off the excess and we're just gonna press this right onto the inner corner. Now I just sharpened up the edges and I'm wiping away any fallout from that glitter, which there is definitely fallout from that Ulta glitter, but that comes with the territory. It's a very high impact glitter. And now I'm going to pop on some mascara. I'm using the Maybelline Sky High Mascara and I'm gonna use a new lash from Kiss. This is part of the Lash Couture line masterpiece one-of-a-kind luxe lashes and these are in the cut avant-garde all right lashes are on and now we're going to get into complexion so to start things out especially for the summer i love going in with a glowy primer and i just picked this up from collab this is sold at like sally beauty i don't know where else but this is the it's just called the filter highlighting liquid so this is what the packaging looks like we're going to start out with a little bit of this I'm gonna focus this more on the outsides of the face, not really on the inside or the T-zone because we're gonna use a different primer. Wow, yeah, that definitely gives a very pretty glow to the skin. It's not too much. There's not really any coverage or anything like the Hollywood Flawless Filter by Charlotte Tilbury. It's just really more of like an illuminating primer. It almost reminds me of the Becca backlighting primer when that was a thing. Rest in peace. But for summer, especially on my clients, myself, I always like to go in with a gripping primer in the T-zone. I'm using the e.l.f. Power Grip Primer, and we're gonna use a little bit of this, and I'm going to put this anywhere I know my foundation tends to move or come off, or areas I know are going to just get shiny or sweat throughout the day. I also like to definitely put this on my chin and my smile lines, these are the areas I know crease. Okay, now for foundation, I wanna show you guys a technique that I like to do on clients during the summer, which is a lot of times you want to build up coverage or you want a certain level of desired coverage, but you don't wanna lose that lightweight feeling and that glowiness that you want during the summer. So what I like to do is actually combine a cream, a more full coverage cream, like the Kevin Aquan Sensual Skin Concealer, or this is from Dermablend. This is the Quick Stick Body Correction. This is like a cream foundation stick that is very full coverage. And then we're gonna put the Beauty Blender Bounce Skin Tint on top. The reason I'm picking this is not only because I love it, but it's because I feel like this works on all skin types. It, it is the perfect natural finish. It's not 
too glowy, it's not too matte, and it looks gorgeous on mature skin. But the philosophy behind this technique is you're really putting a cream where you need the built-up coverage, just swiping and dabbing it, and then building up your skin tint on top of it with a beauty blender. The reason you're doing this is because creams like this don't move. If you go in with a full coverage concealer that's a more liquidy finish, when you go to blend out that skin tint on top, it's going to mix with the skin tint, and it's going to transfer the finish of the concealer onto the top layer of the skin, where creams like this, once they're placed, they're not going to move once you go on top of it with the skin tint. It's not going to budge underneath, and you're ultimately going to get the coverage from the cream, but you're going to get the finish and the overall light feeling and look of the skin tint. Now moving on to contouring, I just picked up this product and I kind of hate myself for picking it up. This is the Chanel Healthy Glow Bronzing Cream. She ain't cheap, but I will say it's a very big component. Like I think you get a lot of product in here. And the reason I picked this up and the reason I want to include this in summer is because I actually picked this up for my clients because of summer. This isn't like your typical cream bronzers like the Fenty or my favorite NARS Laguna Cream Bronzer or even the Huda Beauty Tantor where those are much more of a natural finish and they're much more opaque. They really do give a more full coverage to it. This is much more sheer and it has a really pretty luminosity to it. So you can see it has that bronziness but look at the sheen and the glow that it has. That's kind of the more contoury bronzing look I want for myself and my clients during summer and there really is no other product like this on the market at least that I found so I dip this in with my beauty sponge I always tap off the excess on the back of my hand and now we're gonna build this up anywhere that the Sun would hit our skin if I'm gonna pretend I don't just get burned but we're gonna concentrate this along the hairline connect it to the outside of the brows oh I mean, look how pretty that is, especially when the light hits it. It's just so beautiful. We're gonna go under the cheekbones. I mean, guys, that's the thing with this. Look at the glow that this gives the skin. It's just so beautiful for summer. And now for cream blush, I have these new blush bombs from Morphe. This is part of the Morphe and Meredith collection. I picked up two colors in Precocious Petal and Audacious Apricot. I'm kind of torn which one I wanna go with. Part of me wants to go with the apricot because of the warmth of the look, but the other part of me wants to add a little bit more pink into the cheeks, we're gonna go with the pink. Okay, so you really have to dip in with these. The reason I wanted to use these is because I love the idea of a balm for summer because it's probably just so lightweight, but let's see how this looks on the skin. Well, that is gorgeous and exactly what I hoped for. It really has that beautiful lightweight sheen to it. It's honestly even lighter than most cream blushes. Maybe one of the lightest cream blushes I've ever tried, like lightweight, even looking and feeling on the skin, which is exactly what I was hoping for, especially for a summer routine. Another thing I love to do with my cream blush in the summer is bring it up to the sides of the nose, if not over the top, because it really just adds that beautiful sun-kissed flush look into the face. So for concealer, I actually haven't tried this yet, but this has been going viral everywhere. This is the Say Beauty Hydro Beam Concealer. The reason I picked this up and wanted it included in a summer video was because Michaela's review was like glowing. She said it was so hydrating, very lightweight, which is exactly what we're going for with a summer look like this. So I haven't used this yet, but let's try her out and see. Normally I would color correct a bit under my eyes, but I don't want to today because I want to see how this performs on its own.
So that is actually about all that came out of the tube with one pump. And I'm going in with another product I've been dying to try. This is the Real Techniques Brightening Concealer Brush. And the reason I'm pairing these two is because I think this will give me a little bit more coverage than a beauty blender. Okay, this brush though, what? I have never been a concealer brush person. I am a diehard beauty blender person, but this just blended my concealer out. It literally looks airbrushed. I uh, can't believe it. Okay, so that is looking gorgeous. So let's finish up the face. I'm kind of floored by the concealer and this brush. I cannot believe, A, that this brush did not disturb my foundation underneath, especially on my forehead. I almost can't describe it. What it lacks in coverage, it makes up for in light reflecting. Like, look at my under eyes right now. It's literally, they're beam. It's called Hydra. What is this called? Hydra Beam? It, it is beaming. And I've been playing with this for like a little bit now, and it's not even creasing under the eyes. Now we're going to set the complexion, and I'm going in with the Jaclyn Hill under eye powder and this is in the shade lilac because we really want to brighten the under eyes and uh, I mean maybe we don't want to brighten it anymore but we want to keep the brightness that we have from this concealer so I just dipped into the powder this concealer still is increasing it's insane and now we're gonna go in and just set with the lilac powder okay and now I'm just gonna go ahead and dust that powder away <laughs> Okay, I'm back and that Jaclyn powder literally just ruined my under eyes. I went to brush away the powder and it literally took my foundation and concealer off my face. I'm very surprised. I don't know what the issue was. I'm shocked that you can't bake with it because I know Jaclyn is a baker and it literally is like an under eye powder. Maybe it just didn't work with the Say Beauty concealer, but also another testament to how good this beauty bounce is. I'm not kidding. I literally had a makeup wipe all of this off. Putting this back on, it blended with what was already there seamlessly. This is how good this is. And then I redid the concealer and saved the day with my amazing Beauty Bakery flower powder. This stuff is incredible. So... That's the only powder I'm recommending in this video. It's what I powdered my eyelids with and it's what I honestly set so many of my clients makeup with anyway. So that Jacqueline powder is a no. Now to set the rest of the skin, I just found this at Sally's. This is from Palladio. This is actually a rice powder and I love rice powders, especially the white shades, which is actually the Beauty Bakery and even the Kimchi White, they're rice powders. And the reason they're so nice is because they're so finely milled. It just blurs the skin and makes everything look absolutely gorgeous. But when I came across this at Sally's from Palladio, this is actually rice powder. And the reason it's so good in general is because because rice powder actually has oil absorbing properties. So it really will keep the oil and shine at bay throughout the day. And even though we have the glowy products underneath, we're gonna add a glow in on top of everything when we're done. But this is just going to subtly mattify and blur everything and really keep that oil from coming through throughout the day. But on top of it, I can't even describe to you how beautiful rice powder makes the skin look. Now we're gonna go in with one of my favorite bronzers for summer. This is from Flower Beauty. This is one of the Heat Wave bronzers. This is in the color Sunswept. So this is much more of a warm bronzer. And we're starting with this one because we really just wanna give the skin that bronzy, summery, sun-kissed, kind of just warmth to the complexion. I love this bronzer so much for summer because it almost feels like a baked bronzer. I don't think it is a baked bronzer, but it gives the most beautiful just radiance and glow to the skin. I have the other shade, which is called Sunrise, and it's much more cool tone. And I use that on all of my very fair clients with dry skin because not only is the cool tone great for them, but 
their dry skin, it really just adds a shine and dewiness back into the complexion. And now to contour things up a bit, I'm going in with my Inklot Bronzing Powder. This is in the shade 216. As you can see, it is much more cool tone. And on a very pointed brush, I'm just gonna go in and we're gonna carve out much more precise and conservative where we wanna add in that shadow. So look at the difference that this gives to the skin, adding in that cool tone down here. It literally makes the cheek look sunken in and sculpted. So look at this side compared to the other. Now for blush, we have another product from Collab that I picked up. This is what the component looks like and the color is Gorge. This is in the shade Unicorn. So let's go ahead and build this up on the cheeks and see how this performs. Oh wow, that's really pretty. It's not as like sheer as I thought it was gonna be. It definitely has better pigmentation. It's also not as like bright pink as it looks in the pan because that color is kind of intimidating, but this is going on a little bit more natural. Now same with our cream blush, we're just going to press this on and across the nose. Now we're gonna finish up the eyeshadow. So I'm taking the orange shade and we're gonna run this along the lower lash line. Now I'm gonna dip into this darker brown shade in the bottom corner here and just put a little bit on the outer corners. Just taking a fluffy blending brush with nothing on it and diffusing that and the top to make sure everything is blended to perfection. And now I'm gonna take the gold shade we went in with on the lids and just highlight the inner corner. Ooh, that is pretty. And now for highlighters, we are gonna have a little bit of a liquid highlighter battle. So we have the Charlotte Tilbury Beauty Light Wand in Pillow Talk, and we have the Flower Beauty Spotlight Liquid Highlighter in Gleam. So these two are totally supposed to be a dupe for one another. So let's put one on each side and see which one's better. Okay, let's start with Charlotte Tilbury on this side. I think I'm gonna use my finger to blend this out. But that might've been too much. Okay, that's Charlotte blended out. This looks stunning. It didn't disturb my foundation at all. It didn't mess with anything. And keep in mind, everything is very powdered. So the fact that it did that is great. Let's do the Flower Beauty. I'm gonna blend this out the same way. And that is Flower Beauty blended out. So same exact thing, did not mess up my foundation at all. It really looks beautiful on top of the skin. So what do you guys think? We have Charlotte Tilbury over here and Flower Beauty over here. Upon application, they both look flawless. They don't mess up the complexion. My skin is very powdered and it didn't disturb anything. So this is definitely a tough call. I think I know which one I like better. But which do you guys like better? Now we're gonna go in with the lip liner from LA Girl Precision Liner in Cafe. And now we're gonna go in with a Sephora Collection lipstick. This is in the shade L22. Now we're just gonna do a little clear brow mascara from e.l.f. This is by far my favorite because it's the only one in my experience that actually dries down completely clear. I've used so many other ones that go on clear and then in like five hours you look at your brows and they're all like white and crusty. And now my favorite setting spray of all time, the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray, in my opinion, nothing keeps your makeup on better. That is the finished look, you guys. I hope you had fun doing this summer tutorial with me and learn some tips and tricks. I really love the way this came out. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you are new here, my name is Johnny. Please subscribe to my channel. If you are already subscribing, sure to hit the notification bell right next to the subscription button and you'll be notified every single time I post. Wherever you guys are, I hope you are happy, safe, and healthy. I love you and I will see you on the next video.